In this episode, the guys heat up some rubber before they talk eight lug spindles at Kibbe Tech Off Road. Banks built, protected by Amsoil with support from Roadster Shop and Nitto. The guys at Strange Engineering are hard at work on our custom eight lug rear end. But that brings up a great question. How do we pull off the front end? Typically, Roadster Shop teams up with Willwood, who makes a five lug pro spindle. But that's made for lighter duty applications. We've got a heavy Duramax and eight lug hubs. So we need spindles to put those hubs on. And I have an idea. All right, checklist. Let's do it. Cameras. Check. Check. Okay. Microphones. Check. Check. Test one, two. Gas cans. Check. Got two of them. Okay. Fire extinguisher. Major check. <laughs> So, you know, I co-host the Truck Show podcast with Sean Holman from Motor Trend. Right. I had sold my my big lift to Dooley, and for a while, I was truckless. I had no truck. And the listeners started to get upset. They're like, hey, you can't host a, the Truck Show podcast without owning a truck. And one of our listeners called in and said, hey, I got a 1966 Chevy C20. I'm going to sell it to you for a dollar. My co-host, Sean, slaps a buck on the console, and we bought it. So a lot of our geometry is already going to be predetermined because of roaster shop. But there's also something called kinklin inclination. So that means you have an upper and lower ball joint. And if you were to draw an imaginary line from those two ball joints to the bottom of the tire, and you match that up with the center line of your tire, there's gonna be a distance between the two. And that's called your scrub radius. So if you have a really small scrub radius, you have leverage over your steering. You have more control. And you know, if you have zero scrub radius to where they're in line with each other, you can run no power steering. In the parking lot, it might affect you, but you know, with a light enough car, no power steering, you won't notice much. But if you have, say, a, a huge space around there, you've got a huge scrub radius, that tire is gonna have a lot of leverage over your steering and you're gonna be fighting that thing all day. That's another thing to think about to where your back spacing is very important to that scrub radius. So that inclination is already determined by roaster shop geometry, that, that is already drawn. And depending on how we set up the back spacing, that's also gonna determine our scrub radius. So the, so the closer we can get to zero, the better, whether you go negative or positive. That way you have a better driving feel and a better steering feel. Oh man, how'd that thing even make it here? <laughs> oh man, look at this thing. What's so, up, good buddy? to see you. How you doing? How you doing? Fantastic. Up, man? We made it. This is Eric. Ryan, nice to Thank meet you. you. Well, so here she is, 66 C20. Does it do burnouts? Do you want to find out? Yeah, let's go do this. Oh, let's get that out of the way. It. All right. First things first. Oh, I'm, gonna, yeah. I'm gonna steal some of your gum there, Ace. Because it smells like gasoline. Hubba Baba is right here. <laughs> do you have to like pump it three times? Uh, it should be okay. That old Chevy had yeah, to give it a yeah, couple it is, pumps. Yes, you do have to do the triple pump. <laughs> give it some gas. <laughs> give it some gas. Oh, oh. We got a dead battery now? No, no. no get, rotate it back and then do it again. Harder. It doesn't go no, further. what are you talking about? <laughs> oh no! What'd you do to our truck? Did we just kill the battery? What'd you do? Oh, we got it! <laughs> oh man.
have to drive home on those tires. Thanks for reminding me. <laughs> Nothing to see here. Oh boy. Uh, I'm not on fire, so that's good. Rust. I think that's us. Oh, that's that definitely fell off of this thing. Well, at least it's not anything important. It's just like a fender bolt or something like that. So, so. we'll we'll keep it with the truck. So just we in didn't case. technically lose it. <laughs> Matt, nice to meet hey, you. Nice to meet you. Thanks for having nice us nice out. You. Letting us by. invade your office here. Ryan is the guy that scraps everything on napkins and yeah. does a little etch a sketch <laughs> and then <laughs> and writes then. it on a napkin with some crayon and then slides it over here and Tell him okay. to make that into real life. You really yeah. should give him an Etch-a-Sketch at some point. Again. <laughs> yeah, we'll this. <laughs> you could do that. Well, let's talk about our setup. So we send over, basically, we say, here's the existing Willwood cast steel spindle, right. right? That normally Roadster Shop would put on their spec series chassis. But we said, make it an eight lug. So we were talking to the guys at the Roadster Shop and basically uh, Mike over there sent us the Pro Spindle, which was what it was originally mocked up off of. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I think somewhere along the line, somebody got the Willwood guys involved, got the eight lug hubs here. So uh, we're using now the Duramax uh, unit bearings, the massive, what are they, 16 inch Willwood? Uh, yeah, 15, 15 inch, inch 15 rotors. Inch, yeah. 15 yeah, inch, six piston. six piston rotors. And, um, and yeah, basically we, we developed a way to design a spindle around the pro spindle geometry and then made it, made it to the eight lug spindle. Being all machined, it basically will just key together and then we just weld it. We won't have to build a fixture or anything like that. And a lot of the stuff bolts together too. So we could run bolts through everything and then key everything together, weld it, and then it's done. And the spindle size is, would it's fit behind this, this, this rotor. So it all starts off with this, uh, it's actually one and a quarter inch thick plate right here. And uh, pretty much consists of this component right here, which is the, the front snout block. It has some keys here to key the caliper bracket that will be machine, machine out, uh, machined out of aluminum. Yeah, so if you see that pocket there, the caliper bracket, which is billet aluminum, the adapter to the radial mount actually keys into the spindle so it's not just relying on the bolt. Is this the, the craziest difference of size between rotor assembly, hat, and actual upper and lower control arm? Like the, the, the ratio seems different yeah. than anything you've done before. Yeah, this is a lot smaller than what we're used to do, uh, used to doing. So the ball joint spread on this is, what is it, four or 13 inches? Yeah, it's actually, it all fits lower. inside of the rotor itself, the whole, <laughs> you know, so that's unique in itself. What's yes. a, what, what would be a typical spread for, say, a long travel kit, like 20 plus? Yeah, yeah we're around about 20, 20 inches from center, upper uniball to lower uniball. And then the rotors we run are a 14, and we still run big brakes like this, so the caliper is relatively similar to what we usually do, but the rotor is bigger. Yeah, so Jay and I were talking yesterday about the advantage of this guy over, say, the traditional spindle someone would run in this kind of setup to where you have the 1.3 inch snout going into the spindle to where this guy, you've got this huge surface area to bolt up to the spindle and get a better grab onto that guy. Yeah. I think it's going to give you a much better transition of load into the spindle. For sure, yeah. I mean, the unit bearing on this thing is just massive. I mean, this thing is designed for like you know, high capacity, a lot of weight. Yeah, Chevy 2500, 3500, and single rear wheel or dually, they all run this big same unit bearing. And this is a two-wheel drive unit, so it doesn't have the, the bore in it and the splines for the axle. Right. So Jay was talking about the traditional uh, spindles for these guys. And, you know, since the spread is fixed, uh, we pretty much have to make use of that area if we're running such a big break. We got a lot of force going into that guy when it's trying to stop. So. I feel like this was almost a little bit of a packaging challenge to where we have to make a really strong piece in a really small area. Yeah, the smaller, uh, it's nice for some of the um, pro spindle applications like these, you know, Chevy two doors or whatever they are. But uh, for this truck with the added weight and then these monster brakes, we definitely had to add a lot more material to the spindle to make sure that there's all that strength in that small spread. All right, can we go in the back and see some stuff? Yeah, let's go check out the shop. So this is pretty much what we're going to see in Lockjaw, right? Yeah, pretty much the same thing you see in every, uh, you know, lowered truck on the road is a fabricated uh, chromoly plate lower arm like that. 
How much travel in this when it's done? Um, so in the past, we've squeezed about 21 inches of travel out of this front end. Wow. Which is the same one on that truck right there. So this is our chrome truck build. If you can imagine why we call it that, it's just got a bunch of chrome on it. Bunch of parts on this thing are chrome. The transmission case is even polished. The skid plates underneath, they're all polished. The insides and the outside, which will get beat up. So you got some anodized billet seat mounts here? Yeah, we got the, the billet seat sliders there. They're just a simple design. You just pull the pin and you'll be able to adjust the seat. You see all these goldish welds, and I know it's silicon bronze, but some people may not know why silicon bronze is used when you're tying into the cab. Can you touch on that? So uh, I've always done that from probably the first cage I've ever done. I've always done silicon bronze. It, it melts at a slightly lower temp than, than regular steel rod, and it has a little bit of flex characteristic to it to where if this stuff's moving around a little bit, you know, the welds, just, the panels won't pop. So it's gotta, you know, absorb some of that flex. So we're squeezing about 19 inches of travel out of the back of this. And doing the short course is just a little easier way of building a truck, a little less expensive than like the other truck, you know, cutting the back off and doing everything. Um, but still gets good travel, still works really good. This thing still has a full bed. Uh, it'll get a spare tire right here. Uh, bedsides will still go on, so you know you have a little uh, little space up there for groceries and stuff like that. Fancy grocery getter right here. Yeah. <laughs> Our bulkheads. These are the ones we've been seeing on Instagram these yes. days. You're like mass producing these. The other four are on the table over there, but uh, we put a lot of time into these and the design and everything. Uh, there's a lot of you notice there's a lot of billet parts in them, so we wanted to get a good mix of the billet and all the fabricated parts in this bulkhead. All designed in-house, so everything in-house. Gonna be a pretty cool build. Putting this bulkhead on, we could do a tube chassis, put it on a Chevy, put it on a Toyota. So any full-size truck, this bulkhead will work on. So the control arms mount down here in a very similar position to our C20. Yeah, definitely the same. You know, <laughs> all, the, all the air ride trucks and, you know, C10 trucks, their A-arm spread six inches, but, uh, but no, yeah, the A-arms mount in here and they come out to about this far. So you can see they're about two and a half feet long. The arms are really big on these trucks. And then uppers, are you running J-arms? Yes, correct. The upper would be a billet aluminum J-arm that both front points or both A-arm points are mounted here. And then it comes backwards. So we do that because we have two big, massive King shocks that have to fit right here. So running an A-arm around the shocks doesn't work because then you have a motor there, so everything comes from the front and then works our way back. So this is full trophy truck. I imagine this is going to be basically race ready. Yeah, pretty much. Basically, it's a full trophy truck shock package. It's a 3.0 internal bypass king coilover with a 4.0 external bypass, 7-tube 4.0 bypass. Um, that's an 18-inch stroke and this is a 20-inch stroke. It's got the big finned reservoirs, and it's got our big, massive billet aluminum trailing arms. You probably got 20 grand in these kings, I would guess. About 26. Wow! <laughs> uh, this is our Haas VF4 SS Vertical Machining Center. So this is a um, three-axis mill, and we have our material now. This is that main block that we were talking about. The uh, lower and upper uh, ball joint mounts and this is gonna be the brake mount. So these are all the components that are gonna be machined to get that modular design. So machine the, uh, the backside first, and then we'll turn it around, have a fixture plate, and basically machine the front side of it. So it's a two-part operation. So when you machine a block like that, do you usually have a rule of thumb for how much material you grab you want on either side of the vise? Honestly, the most you can get, the better. Uh, sometimes you don't have the luxury of holding on to a whole bunch, so an eighth of an inch is like a bare minimum. But here we have about a quarter to three eighths of an inch that we're holding on to. So it's more than sufficient to really get some nice solid passes and just start taking the material off. I like those glasses. It's Thank very you. like Golden Girls-esque. Oh yeah, I've got like 10 of these. I just gotta <laughs> lock into the look. So this is what we're running on your truck. And you saw some of these trucks around here running big hubs. So it's same same bolt pattern, eight on 180. They're building a couple of diesel pre-runners, so gotta have that eight lug. And then the rear is actually a different hub. This is a rear hub, and that is a three and a quarter bearing. 
So it's massive. Look how big the, oh, Jesus. the bearing. And look at the, the, the splines yeah, in there. Yeah, I see the teeth in there. So it runs a massive axle in there. I think it's about two and a half inch diameter axle. So you can see that massive three and a quarter bearing right there. So this is Pro-Am's trophy truck hubs that you see on a lot of trophy trucks, but we had them make them into the eight lug because we got a couple diesel builds that we're doing and we wanted to keep them eight lug. So this is what we went with. So you can see the difference between like a daily driver or like a, you know, a lower truck or something like that compared right. to like full blown pre-runner trophy truck style stuff. Does Pro-Am usually do six lug? Yeah, so this is usually a six on six and a half which is standard trophy truck lug pattern. And then we had them go to the eight on 180, which is just massive. Price wise, I think we spent a couple hundred bucks for these. Yeah. What are we talking for the Pro-Ams in an so, eight lug? So for a complete set of these, they come with rotors, with rotor adapters, with bearings, with seals, with every snouts, rear snouts, everything, it's about 10 grand. And you can buy these on Rock Auto? Like I did these? <laughs> <laughs> totally. <laughs> so in addition to the spindles we're building for you, I think based on my initial donuts and the stock truck, we need to help you out a little bit with something. So I think you just have to put one of these in the truck. The hoon handle. The hoon handle. Definitely need one. This has become the signature Kibi Tech piece. Yeah, this is, we put these in almost every truck we build now. It's just adds a lot of fun, you know, it's just a lot of fun. And actually it helps in like a situation, say you don't want to, you're in the dirt, you don't want to get on the brakes really hard because then the rear of the truck gets super light and want to start coming around on you. So you can just grab this and it actually kind of hunkers the truck down. So it's not just for hooning around, even though that's what I mainly use it for because it's just a lot of fun. Wow, with the Kibi Tech spindles and the Willwood brake system, this one would go perfect on our truck. <laughs> Think it's gonna start? Not a chance. We can still catch him. Bailey, you wanna go get him? Come on, seriously! Well, I guess I really am staying. No. All right, well, gotta go work off that debt. Start dog! This is embarrassing! <laughs> In the next episode, Gail reveals the details about Lockjaw's supercharged Duramax L5P. You guys have had a lot of questions leading up to this point, and I want to answer a few of them.